I'm Lauren James and I'm a professional author. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about how I got started in the publishing industry. So I actually studied chemistry and physics at university but I've always been a big reader and so whenever I had a summer holiday or Christmas holiday I would be writing and I started working on this, a novel about reincarnation when I was 16 and by the time I was 19 I'd finished the first draft. And so I didn't know anything about the publishing industry, I had no connections within publishing. So I just googled how do you get published and I found out that the first step is to get a literary agent and once you've got one of them they do the hard part of getting a book deal for you. So I found a list of the ones in the UK online that represent young adult fiction. Uh, I didn't even really know at that point that I was writing young adult fiction, I just knew that the characters were teenagers. So I sent it off to six agents and within a few months one of them replied asking to read the full manuscript. So I sent it off, at that point it was very terrible, it was like twice as long as it should have been, there were plot holes, there were jokes that just weren't funny, uh, it was not a good manuscript but I sent it off, she really liked it but she asked for some changes. So she, we did what was called a revise and resubmit where I spent six months editing it on my own and then sent it back. She read it and liked the changes and had seen that I was capable of editing and could work with her on feedback so she offered to represent me. Then spent six months editing it together and then sent it off to 12 editors at UK publishing houses who publish young adult fiction. Within two weeks we'd had two offers from two different editors. They both had given different advances and I talked to them both on the phone and found out what they were planning to do with the, the manuscript and what changes they'd like to make and I went with the one that I agreed with those changes the most. They had very different ideas. Luckily that one had the higher advance so it was an easy to decision to make. An advance, if you don't know, is the amount of money you're given. Uh, it's a, it can be between 3,000 and 300,000 pounds and you're given a third on signing a contract, a third on delivery of the edited manuscript and a third on publication of the book. So it can take be spread out over several years. That money is paid up front and then as the book sells, royalties are marked off your contract uh, as you earn out the amount you've been given up front. So this is an amount that will be negotiated in your contract. So usually you get around 6% to 15% of the recommended retail price of each book. So if it's a big bestseller, you get 6% of 100,000 copies. That will go against paying off your advance. When the advance is fully earned out, you'll start earning royalties every six months. In my case, the advance earned out very quickly because we sold my publisher World Rights and they went and sold translation rights to different publishers. So my first book ended up being translated into German, Brazilian, Portuguese, Turkish, Russian and Czech. After we'd accepted the book deal, I then spent an, a year editing with my editor, doing structural changes, big things overall to the whole plot, line edit changes where you go through on a line by line basis and look at each sentence, and copy edits where you look at things like grammar and plot holes. Uh, then it went off to be page proofs where it's typeset into the actual way it will look in a book and then finally it goes off to be proofed and printed. So it actually took two years from when I got the offer initially to when it was released before it came out and it took four years between when I first finished the first draft to when I had a finished book in my hands. During that time I was working on the sequel so I got a two book contract so I was already under contract guaranteed that a sequel would be coming out so I was writing and editing that and I was also writing the first draft of an uncontracted book that we then submitted to my editor at the same publisher. The publisher had an option which meant they had first right of refusal on anything else I wrote. If I didn't want to work with them again I could have returned down any offer they made. It is not going to tie you into a contract if they've got an option. It's just something there that gives them a chance to spend I think it's about 90 days looking at it before you can send it elsewhere. I uh, really liked working with them so I was very keen to work with them anyway so it didn't really matter in my case whether I had an option. So I sent them a first draft of a novel that I'd written and we then got a second two book deal for that novel and an untitled novel. So by the time my first book came out I knew that I was going to be published with four novels. Since then I've had five novels published with another four under contract and I am releasing one online serialised for free to readers with the intent to later tradition publish it. Um, 
I have been working full time as an author ever since I got my first book deal. I got the deal while I was still at university so I decided to take a gap year and try and work as a full time writer for a year and see how it worked. I lived with my parents so I didn't have many living costs, I didn't make much money that year but since then my income's gone up every year and I've been a full time writer ever since. That isn't to say that I'm a full time writer, uh, I do lots of other stuff to um, supplement my writing income. So I am a freelance editor, I run uh, creative writing workshops and tutorials and online courses. I do a lot of public speaking engagements that I'm paid for at schools, universities and festivals. I also run an Etsy shop where I sell merchandise like art prints and enamel pins for my books. I have a Patreon that people are using to support the novel that I'm serialising for free. And I also do some freelance short form uh, writing commissions. So my income comes from a lot of different places. Uh, because the money you receive from publishing is so erratic, even if you know that you're going to be earning enough to make a living wage in a year, you still do can't depend on when that money will arrive because royalties can come at any time. Advances are paid over such a long spread of years that there's just no guarantee that you'll receive it in any specific tax year. Uh, so I'm self-employed, so I take 100% uh, of my earnings and then I have to reserve the amount I'm going to pay in tax each year. Because of that, I'm doing a lot of administration, not only for taxes, but also for organising events and invoicing fees. As a freelance worker, I have to bear that in mind when I make my hourly rates and day rates. I obviously also don't get sick days or holiday pay. If I stop working, I stop earning, and so I have to include that in my fees. One of the biggest tips I have for people who want to become a full-time writer is to do what I've done and uh, diversify your income and make sure that you are doing different types of work that can supplement each other so there's never any point in time where you don't know where your money is coming from. I'm never relying solely on my writing income, uh, not only just money-wise, but also emotionally. If you're only working on one project, then if something goes wrong with it, you've invested all your time and emotional uh, input into that project. And things do go wrong a lot in publishing. I've had a US publisher close down two weeks before the book was released, which meant that they didn't promote it or market it in any way. I've had another publisher close down after we accepted an offer from them which meant that we had to wait for them to return the rights to us before we could go elsewhere with that project. I try to have something at each stage in the process so that I'm not emotionally devastated when something like that does happen. So I have a book that I am uh, in the early stages of planning, a book that I'm first drafting, a book that has gone off to be edited, a book that I'm structurally editing, and a book that is being made into a finished copy and I'm working on the promotion and marketing for. I have a few questions to answer as well. The first one is asking whether I find it easier to write young adult fiction because I started when I was young. Definitely, I started my first book when I was 16 and finished the first draft when I was 19, so those characters were very authentically teenage. I don't think you need to be young to write for teenagers, but I think you need to understand the experiences of what they're going through, particularly if you didn't grow up with the internet, you need to know and understand what that is like. Uh, one way you can do that is just by reading the young adult books coming out. I think that's true for any kind of writer. You need to be reading everything that is happening in the market so you are aware of the current trends and you're doing something new with your writing. Another question was what should you prioritise if you can't write full time? Whether you should be writing, networking or researching? Definitely writing. There's no point in networking and having lots of contacts if you don't have a finished manuscript. You should 100% don't do anything until you have something ready to submit. Then you can start the process of building out a network. I will say that Twitter is one of the best things you can get if you are an aspiring writer. Build out a publishing community of editors and publicists and bloggers and reviewers who are all talking about publishing and talking about the current conversations going on in the market. Uh, the bookseller is a great way to get involved in see what is going on and the discussions taking place. If you have any kind of job interview, having an awareness of the conversations happening within the market is one of the best things you can do and you can get that just by passively scrolling through Twitter. If you need a starting place, you can go and look at the people I follow and follow everyone who works in London in publishing and then branch out and follow the people they follow. Uh, just try and get a 
network that you are interacting with and engaging with alongside writing your first novel. I will say that I don't believe you need to write every day, which is a common piece of advice that authors give. I think you need to be reading every day. Personally, I just forget how sentences work if I'm not reading every day and uh, I need to engage critically with other writing before I can have any ideas of my own. So many of my stories are just uh, taken from my favourite bits of my favourite books while I've carried on and done what they didn't do with an, my own take on it. And if you, aren't, if you aren't a reader and if you aren't enjoying reading books, then why are you writing? I'm always going to be a reader first. Another question is about if you want to become a mentor or a teacher, should you build a writing platform first? I have never studied creative writing or English since GCSE. <laughs> the only experience I have is through what I've gained professionally. I think if you are a writer, then you can teach writing because it is not a science. It is subjective and it is personal. If you understand plot and character, then you can understand writing. The first thing that I recommend you do if you haven't done it yet is get the Writers and Artists Yearbook. When I first got my book deal, I really wanted a dummy's guide to publishing, and that's what that is. It's made up of lots of essays from different authors talking about their own experiences and providing tips. It explains stuff like taxes and school visits, and every question you could have about writing is answered in there. Twitter is one of the best resources there is. I learnt nearly everything I know about publishing from just watching people talk on Twitter and Googling stuff and learning the lingo um, and don't be scared to ask questions. Good luck and I uh, can't wait to see what writing you get up to.